Welcome, my fellow quarantine breadheads, to my uh, AirSat studio. Uh, this actually used to be a tailor shop. Uh, before that, it was, I think, the uh, common room for a convent of sisters who used to work in our kitchen. But I have it set up now as a place to produce a video for your how-to festival. I wish I could be with you there in person, but this is the best we can do. So distance learning, remote learning, we're doing that with our high school students. I'm going to do that with you as well. A lot of people have told me they're having trouble finding yeast. Now, I buy my yeast in a one or two pound bag at a time, and we get ours through a distributor, so I don't have to go to the store to buy it. But if you're having trouble finding yeast, there's still plenty of baking that you can do using a baking mix, like Bisquick or Jiffy, if you've ever seen that before. But this is a multi-grain baking mix, much healthier, and uh, filled with fiber and nutrients and so forth, way better for you. And since a lot of you, I'm sure at home, are concerned about how maybe you're not eating as well as you normally do, or maybe you're working hard to eat better than you normally do, here's your chance to do that. So let's take a look at the ingredients we're gonna need, and then uh, you can decide, well, uh, can I get those at my local store? And if so, maybe you might wanna try this recipe. The first thing we have in front of me is three cups of all-purpose flour. And you want all-purpose, not self-rising, and not bread flour, but all-purpose flour. Next to that, uh, one and a half cups of whole wheat flour. This is stone ground, and I know because I ground it myself in my own mill. Then there's uh, three quarter cups of quick cooking oatmeal. Now you can use the old-fashioned rolled oats, but don't use instant oatmeal. That's way too small a piece of uh, oatmeal and that's got a lot of salt added to it and preservatives and it's not going to make it uh, make a very healthy product. We also have a half cup of yellow cornmeal. You can use regular or stone ground. Then next to that a quarter cup of milled flaxseed. Now you want to make sure you get milled flaxseed, either yellow or brown, but make sure it's ground up. If it's whole, those seeds are so hard and so inflexible that they'll just pass right through, your, uh, right through your system and they don't do any nutritional benefit. Next to that is the uh, two tablespoons of baking powder, not baking soda, baking powder, a full tablespoon of salt. And then lastly, one cup, which is two sticks, of cold, unsalted butter, cut into slices or tinier pieces, or you can even freeze it and run it through a grater, but you want to make sure that it's in small pieces and absolutely cold. So we're going to take all those ingredients and put them into a food processor and mix them all together so that we can create a baking mix that has a smooth consistency. But it takes a very long time to get baking powder to mix thoroughly in with these ingredients, almost a full 30 seconds of pulsing non-stop in order to get it to be completely mixed. So we're going to set it up so that the dry ingredients go in first and get mixed up and then we'll add the butter. Okay, so I actually started mixing up ahead of time in, the, in a big bowl just so we can kind of get this to go as, uh, as smoothly as possible and really be completely thoroughly mixed together. And I'm going to spoon this in little by little. And then we're going to mix it up thoroughly. And then we're going to add our butter. This really looks like a lovely uh, mixture. It's very hearty. And uh, let me tell you, it's got more fiber than raw twine. I don't mean that in a bad way. Uh, it's good for you. I mean, and it doesn't actually, uh, because it has so many different flavors in it, it doesn't taste like you're eating cardboard like some multi-grain sorts of things uh, taste. I remember when I first uh, was diagnosed as diabetic, I, uh, I, I went to breakfast and there was a huge pile of donuts, of course, the very first day. And I kind of bit my knuckle, you know, <laughs> and then turned to the shredded wheat. And one of my confers said, you know, if you put a little grape nuts on the top of the shredded wheat, it has more flavor and texture. It was like eating a bale of soggy hay with, with rocks on top. It was, did not help the experience at all. So I prefer to get my fiber in more interesting ways. So let's get this closed up and pulse it 
for about 30 seconds straight through and then it'll be thoroughly mixed. Okay, I think that'll do. So we're ready to add our butter. Now if you don't have a food processor, you can do this by hand with a pastry blender. It does take a little bit longer, but it is possible to do. So don't, don't avoid doing the recipe just because you don't have a food processor. And this is a reason to get one, believe me. Okay, so here's my nice cold butter that I've broken up into smaller pieces. You can just do slices. You can do it all at once or you can do it in sections, like a stick at a time, either one. I'm just going to put it all in at once and we'll get it until it is ground up into small pieces and processed it. We're just going to pulse though. See those pieces? I see some pieces. There's a piece right there that's a, a little bit larger, but smaller than peas. We don't have any big chunks, certainly. That, I think that looks pretty good. I think we're in good shape. Okay, so we're ready to get this out of the mixer. So now that you've got this beautiful baking mix, what are you going to use it for? Well, just about any quick bread that uses some kind of baking mix. So if you were to go online and looking for recipes that use some kind of baking mix like Bisquick or Jiffy or one of the other generic bands, brands, this can be swapped one to one with this one exception. This will absorb liquid a little bit more than the usual baking mix because of the fiber that's in here and the extra protein that's in some of the grains. And therefore, you may want to add a little bit more liquid to your recipe or use a little less flour. That will require some experimentation. You may decide, oh wow, that biscuit was a little dry or that muffin seemed a little bit dry. So you may have to make some adaptations. I have put on my website a number of recipes just for this mix, okay? So if you go to my website, which is uh, www.breadmonk.com, look at the navigation bar at the top of the page and click on recipes. There'll be a drop down menu and you'll see where it says baking mix recipes. That will give you the recipe for the baking mix that you saw today, as well as recipes for how to use it for classic things like pancakes. By the way, when you have your kids at home and you've got extra time, put the pancake batter into a squeeze bottle and use it to draw shapes or to put uh, the initial of your children in the center of their pancake. Remember to write it backwards first and then you form the rest of the pancake around it. Flip it over and there's their initial. Also there's a recipe for waffles. I just made these this week for the monks and they love them so I think you'll really enjoy these. They have so much more flavor because of the different grains. There's a recipe for blueberry muffins with some variations as well as a recipe for a really versatile coffee cake which again can be used uh, with a variety of different fillings. So be sure to check that out. Whatever you've got in your pantry, chances are you can make a coffee cake with it. There's also a recipe for baked cinnamon donuts with a chai glaze if you really want to get a little more exotic. You have to have the special pans for that though. If you don't have them, you could order them online or perhaps you, could, you do have them and you've never used them before, now's your chance. There's also a recipe for Welsh cakes, which a lot of people are not familiar with. They're kind of like pancakes, halfway between a pancake and say an English muffin. You make them on the griddle or on the skillet and you roll the dough out and cut it with a cutter, but uh, they're really delightful. They're tender and they have great flavor. And then lastly, kind of the flagship, is a recipe for a nutty shortcake, uh, multi-grain shortcake with a tart apple topping. It looks absolutely spectacular and your family will really enjoy it. You can of course use this to make shortcake to make ordinary strawberry shortcake since that season is coming up before too long anyway. I hope that you'll experiment. As long as you're quarantined, you may as well spend time in the kitchen with your family. Enjoy yourselves and make yourself a healthy treat. I'm Father Dominic. God bless, stay safe, and happy baking.